in the name of Christ Jesus. Welcome everyone to Mount Tabor United Methodist Church on our season of Pentecost, but we're getting close to Advent. And before we begin, I'm going to embarrass somebody. Bonnie Cook is here today. So everybody turn around and wave at Bonnie Cook. We all know Bonnie. She is just an amazing person. It's so good to see you here, Bonnie. It's good to see all the other here too, but I'm just today I'm focusing on her, okay? Well, thank you. So we begin with some time of uh, announcement this day. Uh, just a reminder that we are, uh, we're still in the COVID season, so we can go to the next slide there. Uh, if someone is wearing a mask, give them their room, uh, their distance. Uh, I have to admit, just to let you be aware, I'm, you know, I'm just a little skittish right now because of my mother-in-law dying of COVID, Harry Riley dying of COVID. So if I just feel I'm taking a little slower for things to get really going, I'm just that's where I am, guys. So just be aware of that. Uh, we're still having COVID cases, so we just want to be aware of that. But you know, keep people their distance if they have masks on, and uh, you know, no sharing of your bubble gum with one another, things like that. All right. And also, we have a lot. We have some meetings today, right after worship. The worship team's meeting, the finance committee's meeting, in the the room next to the office, and then the youth are gathering today at Bonnie's house. We haven't had a Bonnie and Norman's house, excuse me. Norman, sorry. Hi. Norman and Bonnie's house at uh, this afternoon's for our youth gathering. We haven't had one in a while, so I'm looking to get back to those activities. Budgets and leaders, information's on the back table if you haven't received it. We're still looking for a finance committee member, a head, I mean chair of the finance committee. So we're still chewing on that one right now with the nominate committee. The next slide, please. Uh, college care packages. Uh, we have three college students. Please bring in your donations on the 7th, 14th, or 21st, which is this next two Sundays for our three students. Pam also wanted me to remind everyone that the Boy Scouts are going to be doing a collection uh, for food. And last year, they were able to share some of that with us in our, bless in our blessings and backpacks. So if you have boxes, like empty boxes, whatever size, Pam said it doesn't matter, if you'll bring those empty boxes to us, that way... Uh, our Boy Scouts will have ways to collect, you know, so if you have any empty boxes, we would love to see those. Uh, next slide, please. Well, guess what? <laughs> Advent's coming up, and November 28th is the first Sunday in Advent. The theme for it is called Advent Signs, but as I told Robin, I'm struggling what the title should be, but we're going to go with that for right now. And uh, now, in order for us, to, we would really like to fully decorate this church. However, okay, here's the however. We're going to decorate on the 21st, and the amount of stuff we put up will be dependent upon how many people are here. You got it? So I know that sounds like something a daddy would do with your youth, you know, or your kids. But it's, it's, so the amount of stuff that we put up will be based upon how many people are here, okay? Robin? And I just want to, I want to turn my microphone on. There we go. <laughs> Uh, and, and whatever we put up, we have to take down yeah. in January, and I don't want to have like three people taking exactly. it down. Exactly, so, so we help the taking down. I know putting up is easy, but we got to take down too. It sounds like a rock song, you put up, take down, whatever. <laughs> so, but we want to decorate as much as possible if we get the Christmas tree up, and I've been really appreciative how Linda and Robin have keep, you see these wreaths up here, guys? During the season of pandemic, there's always been this nice little decoration, and so I really appreciate that. So we're getting into the Advent season. Normally, we have a Christmas meal in December. I'm still chewing on that one. I just want to see how things play out in November, okay? And then we can decide if we want to try to have a Christmas dinner in December. Yes, Marianne? Uh, when are we doing the Advent uh, just. And Linda, you have an announcement on that? Okay. Falling down on this one. Um, I forgot to call the greenhouse to see to be sure that the price would be the same and everything. So I need to do that this week. I'll let you know. All right. But yeah, I was just gonna say something after Rodney was done. Just be thinking about whether or not you want to order one or not, and if you do, you know, then we'll start next week with that. That answer the question. Okay, good. So, yes, yeah, so we're moving into the holiday season, and uh, we do have uh, both the, the music folk at Crestwood, Covenant, and us. We're going to be having a Christmas on Cantata this year over at Covenant, and we, so that's December. Is that Crestwood? Cantata is at 
Crestwood, excuse me, at Crestwood Methodist, and that's going to be December 19th at 5 p.m. December 19th at 5, and I'll have a slide up that next Sunday. All right, so Advent is upon us. Next slide. And this coming Wednesday would normally be our Bible study, but I am going on with a couple of folk. We have a, a safety church seminar that I'm going to Wednesday night. And so uh, we will not be doing Wednesday night Bible study, but we'll get back to it the Wednesday after. All right, next slide. Marion, I'm sorry. So we don't have any sign up for Blessing Backpack. And like Marion said, we can splurt it out. You could pack up one day, visit the next day. It takes about 30 minutes. Uh, it's one of the easiest ways that we can, whenever people think about world hunger, it's one of our ways that we can hit it, you know. We can take a jab at it. And so, and so thank you for that. And for those Blessing Back people who participate in that. And finally, today's Communion Sunday. Uh, after worship, uh, for those out in internet land, I will be, you, the, t the communion table will be open until 1 o'clock if you want to come and receive communion. I can also mail it to you. So if you're, you know, just give me your address and I will mail you the consecrated elements as a way to keep everyone included. All right. Next slide. I do believe we are ready. Any other announcements that I've missed? Oh, I'm going to marry spares one other person. So... Lynn over there has been visiting our church off and on, and she got a special prize at the Louisville Cardinals game last night. So she was recognized. She won a prize. And, uh, and normally you're not supposed to recognize people who are just visiting the church so they get embarrassed. But as you know, I'm in that embarrassing everyone. And so Lynn, but I thought it was kind of cool that she got this thing. Now for you UK fans, just get over it. For the Cardinal fans, I know we're all happy, aren't we, that she got that, that award last night at the Cardinal game. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's take a deep breath. Prepare ourselves for this Communion Sunday as we get to experience the Sacrament of Grace. And Rich had something else. Yeah. She gets to sit with the athletic director, so I think it's cool. Even our UK fans clap for her. I'm proud of you guys. Way to go. All right. That's how we do diversity, don't we? Yes, yeah, how we do diversity. Let's take a deep breath. Uh, let's be aware that God is with us. His grace and mercy, kindness is always surrounding us. Oh, Lord, may we hear you, may we trust you, and may we obey you. As we stand, uh, Olivia, will you ring the bell? Mom, will you open up? Yeah, thank you. And we're going to do call to worship and as we worship the Lord today. You're already standing. Um, <clears throat> please join me for the call to worship. God has rescued us from the power of darkness and, and transformed us, us into, into the, the kingdom, kingdom of, of his beloved son, son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This, this son is, is the image of the invisible God, God the firstborn of all creation. creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Please remain standing as we sing our hymn.
please join me with um, the um, recitation of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We continue in our time of worship as we come to community prayer for our time of praises and requests to God. And uh, we'll start off with Don. So we had 42 gallons of blood this week. That's really good. That's really good. Pints, yeah, 42. Oh, gosh. Pints. You threw me off there. So 40, 42 pints of, of blood this uh, week. And uh, so um, I appreciate everyone. Thank you, Don and Betty. Y'all just so faithful with us at. So, Lord... Hear our praises. Others this morning. I want to... Uh, Rocky Black, he is... Our brother has just been back and forth in the hospital. It has just been hard. He's fallen. It's just, it's just rough on him right now. I visit him and it just... You know, you just reach a point that you're like done with it. You're just frustrated. And so we want to remember Rocky, but also Carol... Because, um, and, her fam and their, his family, is just a lot on them right now. So we remember Rocky and Carol and all of, her, all of his kids. Lord, hear our prayers. I also today, I want to lift up to you Maybell. And as you know, Maybell is normally here. This, the pandemic has been rough on Maybell. And like a lot of our folk, and she just, we just need to pray for her for strength, just to, just for her she's you know she's staying healthy and stuff but it, it's just been tough on her and for a lot of our senior adults who just can't get here so i want to remember and lift up maybell today lord hear our prayers others yes doug Yes. So Doug wants to celebrate Bonnie here today because they were prayer partners and they've been doing it for a while and they have developed a beautiful relationship. And so it's so good. And I want to celebrate. I'm with my little heart leaps to here today. So Lord, hear our praises. Bonnie, Marion. Nancy. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we work this out together, don't we? We, pr we? we praise together, we grieve together, we just work out our memories together, don't we? <laughs> so yes, Nancy is in Florida. As you know, she is closing down a trailer of something. Her and Ron, a part of her life that she's in some way, another part she's saying goodbye to. And so, Lord, hear our prayers. Okay, so we want to lift up Terry and John and the Griffin family as they've been closing out things related to their family and the, the grief that goes with that. So, Lord, hear our prayers. Somebody give a, a praise today, one that didn't fall over there. Beautiful weather. <laughs> Who said beautiful weather? Marion. Marion, I'm sorry, Marion. Uh, so, so yes, it has been some gorgeous weather, and my favorite tree is just looking good. Have y'all noticed it? I posted on Facebook today. I got under the tree, and it was great. So we want to celebrate the beautiful weather and the trees and good stuff. An hour of sleep. And an hour of sleep, Baxter. 
And yeah, praise. So let's praise. Lord, hear our praises. Did you have something? No, okay. I have a praise Robin and then Bonnie? Uh, praise, I've got a really vaccine appointment tomorrow for her first shot, and I got my booster shot two days ago. So praise that we're going to be vaccinated. So Robin's side of it, she got her booster, but now that they've approved for children to be vaccinated, so, she's gonna, so she just wants to celebrate that. So Lord, hear our praises. Bonnie? Yeah, we're excited to be able to go to Bonnie's house. And you know, Bonnie is a long-time youth Sunday school teacher, long-time youth person. She has loved our kids, so many of them, those who are, no, who are in college. And I just, so I'm going to, we're going to celebrate that, and we're going to celebrate Bonnie's leadership there. So Lord, hear our praises. Dick. So I'm really thankful that we have that beautiful story of uh, a police officer and that, yeah, so check it out. And uh, so Lord, hear our praises. Betty? So it's out there on the narthex table. It's fun to look at that and to see just that group that has been together so many years. They actually put together some bears that I'm going to be delivering to the Hope, host, the Hope Clinic and just is really cool. So Lord, hear our praises. All right, well, let's go a little deeper into God's presence. We thank you, God, that we do not have to work ourselves up, jump over hoops, or know a lot of things to come into your presence. In fact, you invite us. You say, come on in. We thank you for that. We thank you, God, that you're there even when we don't feel it or think it, especially when things are really yucky and crazy. So by faith, we declare and thank you for your presence right here at this moment. Closer to us than the air we breathe or the blood that pumps through our bodies. And we thank you, God. Because sometimes, Lord, we just need, like a child, to snuggle up into our parents' chest and rest, be still. To know that your laugh is always welcome for us. No matter if we're feeling good or feeling bad and if we've accomplished great things or we messed up once again. Thank you for that, God. And thank you that through Christ Jesus and his presence in the world, you've declared that that is your, your focus, the incarnation that Jesus is with us. And so today we pray for those who desperately need your presence. For those who need to know of your touch. Those who are dealing with depression or fear. I pray in the midst of it, God, that you would uh, do whatever you need to do for them to know. And on this communion Sunday, we gather around a table 
reminded Jesus that you did all the hard work and we get to enjoy your grace. That you did the death and the resurrection. You bore the nails in your hand and the marks on your body and the consequences of our sins so that we can know forgiveness. And we thank you for that, O oh God. So we gather around you, Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, and our teacher. Declare that prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. students we're going to have our student moment time as you know we've been walking through and reflecting on this first confession of the apostle creed i believe in god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth so let's go to the next slide and me avoid falling off here now students what are the do y'all know what those are flies and mosquitoes so whenever i think about god the creator i always have a question 
why? <laughs> Mel, you ever, you ever had a question about why certain things have been created? Anybody? Okay, yeah. Look, Haley, you ever wonder about the why? I mean, I wonder about whys like thunderstorms that get out of hand, tornadoes, and hurricanes, and all that. There's a lot of why when it comes to this issue of declaring that God is the maker of heaven and earth. Because one, we believe God is a creator, and so then it brings up a lot of why questions. Why mosquitoes and flies? Now, I did some research, and some people say that flies are useful because they, they devour the yucky stuff. But they also try to devour me, don't they? They try to take away our hamburger, don't they? It, it just, yeah, it's just, and mosquitoes. They do some pollinating, but those dudes can be dangerous. You know, for lots of kids in Africa and malaria. And so go to the next slide there. So whenever you think about God the Creator, students, the why question is always there. So everybody has to say why. Now sometimes science, biology, even scripture can answer the why question. But a lot of times it's mystery. Mystery. Now, when you're a young student, especially, you're not big into mystery because your job is to know as much as possible. Isn't that right, guys? You, you got to learn it all. And then when you get in and you, and you keep doing it, and then you get into college and you think you know it all, you know? And then as you get a little older, you realize that there's just some questions that can't be answered. Older students, would you say yes to that? Yes. yes. And so whenever you think about the creator, you got to deal with the why question because there's a lot of whys that leads to mystery. And eventually we have to hold on to faith. And faith is this assurance of things hoped for, conviction of things not seen. It's by faith we say God did all this because some people say there's no God. It's by faith we declare that. But the Bible tells us that, you know, one way we can grow our faith is by reading scripture Another way is being around older students, listening to preachers and teachers. But it's okay to answer the, ask the question, why? And it's also okay to say faith. So, okay, students, let's do it. So this left hand is going to be your why hand. So you got Amelia, Haley, and all those other older ones you can join in. Here's your why, and here's your faith. So get ready. Why? Faith. And both are important. They're both important. I like that, how that came together. Good job. Let's pray. God, as our creator, God, as our creator we, have some questions. we have some questions. And so we ask, oh God, so we ask, oh God for, faith for faith when we can't get them answered. When we can't get them answered. Amen. Will you please stand and join me in our offertory hymn?
We thank you for the beauty of this day and the gift of life and love, for friendships and all good things. Today, God, we ask that you receive from us our gifts of thanksgiving. Bless them and use them for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Scripture this day is from Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God had made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a, st a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you. And may today, as we come from your word in this time of worship, May we be a little bit more like your son, Jesus Christ, in word and action and behaviors, in whose name we pray, amen. All right. Anybody ever had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Okay. Now, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are wonderful. Even if you don't like them, you, you know, they're okay. There may be a few, and, and I don't eat those as much as I used to, but there's something about the peanut butter that comes together with, some people don't like peanut butter and jelly, so we're just going to move forward here. <laughs> the peanut butter and the jelly, and it comes together, and you bring the two pieces of bread together, and it's like, ooh. Now, everyone knows that with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, if the peanut butter is like the jelly, or the jelly's like the peanut butter, then you really don't have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, do you? And you're like, well, that's obvious, Rodney. You know, because the peanut butter and the jelly, they kind of complement each other. But then when they come together, there's that place where they come together in the bread, and, and you know it's a good place there. Now, some of you are wondering, why is he talking about peanut butter and jelly? Sandwiches. Well, Today, as we come and start digging into chapter 2 of Genesis, it's almost like chapter 1 was like the peanut butter, and chapter 2 is like the jelly. They, they seem to be a little different, and yet they come together and complement each other. And let me show you this. If you, in chapter 1, it ends with the seventh day, so it says, So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Because on it, God rested from the, all the work that he had done in creation. So you would think after this that you're going to have the first day of the new week or some narrative. But then it says, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. What? In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. When I read that, I'm like, it just seems to come together without a flow. It's like you got the seventh day, then you're expecting the narrative to happen, but then it talks about, but in the day the Lord God made the earth and the heaven, I'm like, well, hadn't God already made the earth and the heaven in chapter one? And what about this thing of the descendants of the heavens and the earth? And so it's as if you're reading this story, chapter one, you come to chapter two and you're like, hmm, something seems off. And this offness actually carries on. Because if you lay down chapter 1 and chapter 2, it's like there's a different creational flow. Prime example. Chapter 2, when it gets into talking 
it, it, it talks about that there's first was a human and then everything else was created, like the animals. But in chapter one, the animals are created before the human. Really, just read it. It's like, that don't make sense. Chapter one, God creates all these trees and animals and birds, and then humans are created. But in chapter one, uh, two, the humans created, and then the, hum the animals are created. As if there's something weird. It's like the peanut butter and jelly, there seems to be some difference there. And another thing you'll notice as you begin to get deeper into chapter 2 is the name for God, okay? Now, in chapter 1 of Genesis, the word God is Elohim. Everybody say Elohim. That's the word for God. It's a very broad, generic word for God. And that name is used some 34, 35 times in chapter 1. It's Elohim, 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 Elohim. And then you get to chapter 2, and it becomes... Yahweh Elohim, Lord God. And that's translated as Lord God in your Bibles. Wait a minute. There's a shift there. Something has happened because the prophet is telling us something as if those two just came together. And so a little Hebrew lesson. Whenever you see in your Hebrew scripture the word Lord, L-O-R-D, that's actually the translation of these letters, Y-H-W-H. And that was kind of the sacred personal name that the Hebrews had for God. But they would not pronounce that name. They would just come in, and so they made it unpronounceable. You see that? We pronounce, we translate it as the Lord. Now, scholars, a lot of times they will add an A and E and call it Yahweh. Y'all see that? That's extra. You don't have to pay for that. So whenever you hear people saying Yahweh, they're referring back to this unpronounceable name here. In your Bibles, it will be pronounced as, translated as Lord. And so what happens is that we get to chapter 2, we now start hearing the prophets talk about the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim. It's as if we discovered that that name is a personal name for God from the Hebrews. Before chapter 1 was this kind of broad God that was creating everything. But then we get to chapter 2. It's as if the prophets are saying, that God is our God that we call Yahweh. It becomes more specific. And ever. So basically, then another thing you're going to see in chapter 1 and 2 is that chapter 1, God is like this cosmic, transcendent God that's beyond everything. And then this God comes and brings order to the chaos. He uh, creates life. And then he, in, chapter, in day seven, he then joins into creation and rest. But in chapter two, God is more imminent, very personable. And it's almost that like God is even learning at times. It's really odd. You'll be reading in chapter two, and God's like learning with us about some things. Chapter one, God knows everything. And one of the things you're going to see is that there's this flow happening. As if chapter 1 is like the peanut butter, chapter 2 is like the jelly, but they come together. And what we don't want to do is try to explain away the differences. Sometimes followers of Jesus will try to harmonize chapter 1 and 2. And by harmonizing, you take away something from each one of them. The prophets did it this way because they're trying to tell us something. That God is transcendent, God is imminent. That God is a God that all has been, God has created all, but that the Hebrews have said this God is our God with a very special name. And so it's kind of like it's come together. It's become one in that sense. And so let's, so it's kind of like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, the way I understand it. And one of the things you're going to see in Scripture is that the transcendent God and the imminent God, who is the one God, activates throughout Scripture, the main character. And there'll be times that you're reading Scripture, and it's like God is asking questions as if God doesn't know something, or God is learning. But then other times, it's like God knows everything, God is holy, God is removed, and both realities is how we understand God. There's going to be times that life is very big picture, mysterious questions. 
And then life is as simple as trying to make your peanut butter and jelly sandwich and not get peanut butter all over you. Because it's both and. And so we're going to dig a little deeper in chapter 2 and see how the other side of this creation plays itself out. And one of the things you're going to notice in the reading today, it says, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And one of the questions you ask, well, what day? If I say, what day? What? So you go back to chapter 1, and you're like, well, what day was that? You're, not, you're trying to figure, well, how does that fit? Some would try to make it fit. But as I read that day, it's as if that day keeps going on and on. If you read chapter 2, that day doesn't ever seem to come to an end. It's just like one sequence after another. God makes the human. God puts human into the garden. God brings animals to the garden. Human names the animals. Then God says, hmm, human is lonely. God brings a woman. So then you have male and female. And it seems to be going on and on and on. Have you ever had a day that seems to go on and on? But then other days, the whole week just happens like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, and it's done. And so we have this idea in that day, and we're not always certain what day we're talking about. But we know it's a day. In that day, God did something. God created the heavens and the earth. And so then it opens up by saying, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God, there's that phrase, Lord God, had not caused it to rain upon the earth. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. So when I read chapter 1, Creation starts out as a watery mess. You remember that? It's chaotic. It's watery. It's dark. But in chapter 2, it's like creation starts out as a barren desert. There's not many, there's not much there. There's no trees, no plants that God had created in chapter 1. It's like it's, and then there's this little water that gets on the ground and makes it kind of muddy. Has anyone ever had just a kind of barren feeling every once in your life? Where things just are, seem a little muddy? It's like you're missing something. And that's kind of how I see it happening. It's as if God is saying that in our lives, we experience the chaos and the darkness of chapter 1, but we also experience the barrenness of chapter 2. And one of the other things that I've noticed that's very interesting about this is that the reason Scripture says in that chapter why it was barren is that there was no one to till the ground. Wait a minute. Because in chapter 1, it's like God just created everything and the trees and the, it all started happening without human help. And then the humans come in day 6 and God says, now you're going to manage all this. But in chapter 2, it says, I need somebody to till the ground. Because if I don't get someone to till the ground, it's going to stay barren. If I don't get someone to till the ground, what I need for creation to happen is not going to happen. Think about that, how important that somebody is. And if we pay attention close enough, we're going to begin to find out that God is not just wanting us to till the ground. God wants a garden. God wants a garden. And it's not going to be just any garden. It's going to be a very important garden. And so basically, as we come and begin chapter 2, I want us to think about your life right now. Sometimes life is like our chapter 1 Genesis. It is chaotic. It's crazy. It's out of place. It's dark. And you need God to come and bring some order. But other times, life is like chapter 2. It's barren. It's deserted. There's not a lot of vegetation there. And you need God to come and bring some life to you. And the reality is, is that we worship a God who brings order 
and life. Life and order. So it doesn't matter what we are facing as humans. Genesis 1 and 2 begins to tell us something. That we who encounter the chaos can also have a chance to encounter the God who brings order. And we who encounter the barren desert, we can also count on the God who brings creational life. Just like Jesus did. Because, you know, Jesus is the one who came on the scene who brought order to the water. He walked on the water. He brought order to the water. But he also said to us, I am the bread of life. I'm the vine. I'm the garden. I'm all this good stuff. And so we find that this Jesus that we come to gather around the table with is just like the God of chapter 1 and 2 of Genesis. Because he is that God manifested in our lives. So I ask you a question today as you come to this table. Is your life a chaotic mess? Is it out of whack right now? Is it out of order? Do you feel overwhelmed? Are you barely breathing? Or is your life kind of like deserted right now? You feel like you're missing something. You feel like Something that used to be there is no longer there. Maybe some of you can feel both at the same time, where you're in a desert and there's this big old chaotic spider chasing you. Now, all today are welcome to this table. This table. The Jesus who came to show us who God is and what humanity can be. And as we gather around this table today, I want you to particularly hear the invitation that God has allowed me to give to you as kind of the underservant of Jesus. We say it a lot, but I want you to hear it today. It says that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him. Did you hear that? Jesus is not inviting to his table particularly those who are like, I am a terrible sinner. Okay, that may be true, but that's not why he's inviting you to the table today. He's not actually inviting you to the table to get it all figured out and all the mysteries of life. No, he's saying, come to this table and love me. Love me. Love me. This is a love invitation today. And I'm not talking about that Hollywood you know, I love you, baby, kind of love there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. We're talking about agape love. The kind of love that in spite of how hard it is, you're going to do the best. As Jesus does the best for us. And so there, day, brothers and sisters, Christ, our Lord, invites us to his table. This is his table. All who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So brothers and sisters, hear the good news. For it is good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Christ Jesus, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. It is right. And it is a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us, you formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life.
when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name when we join them in an ending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, always, in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Messiah has died. Messiah is risen. Messiah will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here. And all these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, Make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many, we who are many, are one body, for we partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup, the cup over which we give thanks, is a sharing in the blood of Christ. So, brothers and sisters, if you will gather your communion in the cup, if you'll first open up and take the wafer. The body of Christ given for you. If you'll take the juice, the blood of Christ given for you, amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourselves to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And this morning we have a chance to declare a song of give thanks. There are many words that we use to describe this table. The Lord's Supper, Communion, Eucharist. The word Eucharist means thanksgiving. And we thank God for his gift of Jesus Christ who has set us free from sin and evil. So this morning, let's, let's stand and sing this old praise. I think it's an old praise song. Uh, give thanks. Let us stand and sing. the blessing.